rewards of building your own home are practical and very inspiring. The minute the house is built, you own it. Everybody has an urge to build a house. We unlock something in people. The Shelter Institute, of course, is not just talking about building a house. It's talking about discovering yourself. Two, three, three. Well, welcome to the Shelter Institute. In 50 years, there's only been one beam was cut two inches too short, and his grave site is down in the corner. <clears throat> so it's the first day of the timber framing course. We've got 35 people coming here today to learn how to timber frame and cut a 24 by 24 frame this week. So this morning we'll get everyone checked in with name tags, folders, and schedules, and then we'll head out to the studio and sit down. From there, we're gonna jump into hand drafting. The takeaway for students isn't necessarily that they're gonna go out and hand draft everything that they build, but more that they become really intimately aware of all of the framing members in the building and how they relate to each other and the spaces that they create. My plan is to build several camps to rent out and to eventually live there. We'd like to build a saw shed and then a barn. Maybe a house somewhere <laughs> in the middle of the barn. We're building a wedding venue. My wife and daughter, they want to get into that. And I'm a hands-on learner, so this is the place to be. First, it's the addition where I live because I still have kids in the house. Next, my dream house. And when people come to stay, they can stay in that first 24 by 24 I built. That's the grand plan. I definitely need more barn garage space, but I also love saunaing. So maybe do something small to just kind of bridge the gap between not having done this on my own to building a barn. I do want to build an office, log and harvest our own timber, and build a home for me and my wife and our children. Probably start using this technology to build some pergolas and that type of stuff. My primary goal was to find a way to build a barn. Obviously, cabinet makers love a nice new shop, right? Yeah, new shop would be good. Big shop. <laughs> this afternoon, we gave them their tool kits and we walked through all the different tools in the kit. The tools you take home are very thoughtful, kind of a tool snob. I'm like, oh, so they're gonna give me a set of tools, I'm probably gonna trade half of these in. And then I get there, I'm like, no, I want every single one of these tools. <laughs> they're all really sweet. And then we also took a dive into the cut sheet package because that's the thing that they're gonna be working from. Basically the blueprint for manufacturing this week. Uh, when Gaius was finished with the cut sheets in the classroom, the class migrated over here into the shop. When a timber frame class comes up, we basically need to spread out a whole building. We've got a couple of little signs that we're gonna put around just to make it clear what each piece is gonna be used for. Our job was to teach people how to use a handsaw to make absolutely exquisite, perfect cuts. It's surprising how easily people mess up a cut, but also how easily they make it perfect by realizing what is happening, what those teeth are doing, and mostly what their body does with the saw. In about two hours, they cut 58 timbers, so that's 116 <laughs> cuts. And at the end of the day, we're all ready to do the horse and tenoning. Beautiful. Good nice looking cut. Thank you. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. <laughs> Tonight we're having supper. Blueberry has prepared several soups and salads. So it's a party, getting to know each other kind of party. Meeting all the people in the class was so cool, like people from all over the country, being able to talk trades with them. You know, it was a very mixed group of people, people from every walk of life, every age group. I think it's a certain type of personality that comes, and so that was his immediate nice vibes to talk with everybody. And the camaraderie of meeting everybody and learning about their different projects, kind of mm -hmm. collaborating with them and having references to utilize after the course as well. We've seen people from all different fields and all different ages, all different backgrounds. They'd like to take their lives into their hands again. They'd like to have more control over their life, so they do have something in common. We've learned so much from our students, it's been fantastic.
This is day two of the Purely Post and Beam in-person course, and we start with assigning people their work for the next couple of days. So we'll assign a couple people to each post and three people to each beam. But the real activity this morning is sharpening. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what it means to get something sharp and then talk about the process. We'll do that in a large group. Then we're gonna break into smaller groups. We find that seeing something twice or three times is really important when you're trying to learn. I don't think I've ever had that much education about how to sharpen and how to get a blade that is able to cut wood the way we were able to do it during this week. I was surprised how well I learned how to sharpen my tool. <laughs> That's a skill that I definitely needed. I love getting something so sharp I can shave with it. We have a lot of people getting done with sharpening, so the next phase is for people to start labeling top, bottom, north, south, east, and west, and then actually doing the layout on the timbers. So that would be marks for all of the different mortises and tenons and things like that so that we can begin the chiseling process. The next step is to actually start chiseling, and it's absolutely critical to have razor sharp tools to do that for a bunch of reasons, not the least of which is that it's much more enjoyable when your tools are sharp, but you'll get much better results. You'll be able to pair very fine shavings and get precise joinery. Working with a very sharp tool is something that's kind of magical. You don't realize how easily you can shape a piece of wood until you have a properly sharp tool. Sharpening and everything is very important, and I think that was the most surprising aspect for me. But we did spend four hours sharpening, so that's a really good lesson that it really does make a difference. We got all of these tools to razor sharpness, and the fact that not as many people got nicks or gouges was pretty amazing. I think everybody was really patient using those tools. I enjoy groups like this where we're all working towards the same goal, same context. It's amazing to think that you're going to just use a little mallet and a little chisel to like block out out of an 8x8. It's just an artwork. I've worked with chisels before, but I've been a little gun shy about how to just operate it with confidence. Inside baseball of each individual tool, I, I really got a lot out of. Not only can you position the tool this way, you can also switch it this way, and these are the pros and cons for doing that. When you get a joint to 80% roughed out and then taking that and getting it from 80 to 100% was just really therapeutic. I love slicking, I love the refiningness and the little curls coming off. It was very beautiful and smooth and satisfying. I don't mind doing the malleting and the chiseling and she can do the slicking. Most of the timber has been laid out and scored and is in progress. Everyone has had an opportunity to both chisel for bulk wood removal and then work on refining joinery with a slick. We really seem to be loving it. This is a, just an amazing day. For a lot of people, it's the first time that they've done this type of woodworking. I think we're in good shape for the rest of the week. When I first taught it, I did it with my wife. <laughs> it was just the two of us. And we had uh, 15 students. Now we have typically 35, 40 students. But we have the entire staff, eight people teaching. The whole week can be kind of a whirlwind. It starts out and nobody really has any idea what they're going to be doing. By this point of the week, we've seen everyone show quite a bit of improvement, high level of comfort with the tools. Things are very sharp and their joinery is very good. We try to constantly work side by side with the students so that we can be right there to answer questions. They can see what our work looks like and we can keep the project moving forward at the appropriate speed. And there's a lot of value in being able to learn alongside of those that have been doing it for a long time, that understand the ins and outs and have made tons of mistakes. So being able to learn alongside people that are much more of an expert than I am was incredibly valuable. I could go out and grab all the tools and pamphlets and books on how to do it and I'd probably come up with two dozen different ways of messing something up. Here you feel more free to make a mistake if you're going to and have someone step in and teach you how that went and how you can do better than that. 
can be challenging. Balance with high reward to share what we know as timber framers to the folks who are interested in learning. We're just kind of here as a helping hand to anybody who's got a question or they're struggling a little bit. Making sure people are learning what they need to learn and not being overbearing, just letting them learn through experience. You get to teach the students in a bunch of different ways, make it more malleable towards their form of learning. There's more than one way to do it and how you get that result is based off your technique and which way you feel most comfortable with. The knowledge that the crew has on timber framing is exponential. They just have a way of doing stuff that it's very special. You have Gaius and all the guys, but Pat was in there. There's no other guy that I want to come take my chisel and show me how to do something other than Pat. We were empowered to own our part of the timber frame. If you were given post six, they said, okay, here's the cut sheet, lay it out, we'll check it, but you're doing this, you own this. You're gonna make the cuts. There was no coddling, there was no looming over your shoulder, making sure you did everything right. We were really empowered to own our part of the timber frame. Finally busting through the through mortise, you know, dead center with a mallet and it just pops through the other side. It's pretty rewarding. When we had done the pass through mortise and we had to put a slight angle on it and I worked it and it just came so nice and I said, yeah, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> We're going to branch out as people start finishing up and move them into the other things that still need to be done. So we still have rafters and joists to cut. I enjoy taking the time to slow down a little bit and hone a new skill. We use whatever is appropriate. We use the tools, we use the material that's appropriate. It's true, associated with, with the type of thing we're doing is the idea of back to the homestead and back to the simple, old-fashioned ways. Uh, that's not what we are, are into. We're into finding the best, most efficient way to deal with each problem. And that changes both in terms of time and in terms of place. The cutting of the wind braces was neat to me to watch. The fact that they taught us how to do the stuff by hand, but then they went full tutorial on the equipment to try to speed the process up. I am old school, but at the same time, I'm on a time frame too. So it was interesting to incorporate the newer technology and the power tools. It was really helpful. Just had a little discussion about some of the finer points of finishing up joinery. People are getting to that place very close to wrapping up those big projects. So people have worked on blind mortises, through mortises, dovetail mortises. Most of the tenons have been cut. And then we're actually going to start planing, oiling, and sealing the end grain of all the timbers. Our goal is to have everything completely done by lunch. afternoon we're gonna go back into the studio and have a crash course in engineering. The steps involved in sizing beams and how you make engineering decisions about what type of joint to use where and what the capacities of the joints are. This is can be very loud when it breaks just so you know. What we learned is so amazing, second to none, but it also made me realize there's a lot to know and to take into account. I probably got the chance to do this once and I'd want to do it right. Take your time. Just the right amount of information without overloading. I was like a sponge just trying to get everything I could, you know. I think everyone left with a feeling of like, wow, we could really do this. After that, Blueberry's going to give a slideshow of finished timber frames. Historically, we go on a house tour through a handful of local timber frames that we've built over the years. We haven't been able to do that since COVID, so we're going to offer a slideshow of houses that we've built, showing a set of plans and being assembled and then finished shots at the end of the project when it's all completed. And then after the slideshow, we will still go on a tour of my barn and Gaius's barn and Pat's couple of barns also. And then we'll go over to the farm and have a nice dinner. I didn't realize how amazing this place was. Pat and his family really make it special. You're not just taking a class. You know, Pat's really sharing his legacy with you. You're becoming a part of something. This is what they live and breathe. They really gave themselves to us for this time. And it's really 
amazingly appreciated. And the people are just amazing, both the people that run the Shelter Institute and the people that come here. They were so helpful. They were patient with our questions. They were encouraging, empowering. It's just such a great crew and the whole class had a great culture. Inviting us to their houses, allowing us to see the structures they have built on their property and felt very much like a part of the family for a week. A lot has happened. We've got a whole frame cut. We have done our best to review it and ensure that we'll be able to raise the frame tomorrow. I woke up this morning and I was packing my bags and I was teary-eyed thinking that today was the last day. The bittersweet part was knowing that it was an end and that we were going to be dispersing after that. It puts a smile on your face to see what product was that you produced during the week. Taking those beans and putting them together, it's almost like instant gratification. Every thump that it connected was very satisfying. All the details, taking the time to get all the cuts right at the beginning allowed it all to come together like really, really well. It was interesting to see what worked well and what didn't, what things need to be adjusted, how it all goes together and quickly. The good work that everybody did to this frame to get it to be put together easily. It was wonderful. It was a great sense of accomplishment. It's very rewarding to see all that hard work and everybody working together. It's definitely a team sport, raising a building. In this class, we offer five times a year. So five times 50, it's 250 timber frames. It's just wonderful that people who have never done it before cut out and put out a frame 250 times. All right, on three, we're just gonna stand up at waist height and then very gently walk it in. And three. It was more emotional than I anticipated to see the post I worked on being risen up as part of a bent. You know, you spend all week working and then within an hour, your building is standing. It's just a really cool crescendo to the whole experience. I say I am a hands-on learner and I desperately needed this to tackle the project and I'm just thankful that there's somebody that has done it this long is willing to teach it to someone. I was just a sponge to want to know everything they knew and try to bring that back to North Carolina. Yeah. And you can work in your workshop, you can work one beam or post at a time, you could stack them. You got a you know one year clock on wet wood to kind of get it all stacked and up. For the normal guy with a full-time job and a family, there's still time to build a timber frame if you are motivated to do so. You know, this was always a mystery, but now to know how it comes together and what it takes to make it, my mind is just spinning with exciting opportunities. I just feel so much more empowered to do something. Even if you never build a post and beam frame, to go through this experience provides you confidence to do other things in life. The mission that Pat and his family have had to make people's lives better by doing things with their hands, using their brain, and believing in themselves. Such an important mission, especially these days. So I want to thank everybody here at the Shelter Institute. You know, we've been teaching this for 50 years. We've had all kinds of people take the class. And there's absolutely not the slightest doubt in my mind that this is the best class we've ever had. Yeah.